Hi everyone, my name is Dawn Payne and I'm delighted to be here today to be hosting a series of thought leadership conversations with some fabulous people across the world, a combination of creative leaders and business leaders from some really interesting brands under the banner of Creativity Reframed. For me, something that's really kept me going through the really difficult conditions of COVID has been seeing the opportunity for creativity and problem solving to really make a massive difference. And I'd like to explore that, particularly, I think, seen through the lens of brand and marketing. If we think through time, the role that that upstream problem solving has played to unlock some really, really big problems. Isaac Newton, from the Great Plague, um, was able to actually unlock the laws of gravity. It's obviously a massive breakthrough moment. We saw it again during World War II, when penicillin was scaled out um, as, as an antidote to obviously what was happening there. Um, I'm just really personally passionate about this topic. So who better than to be with me today, my good friend, erstwhile colleague, absolutely fabulous, Kelly Harrington, um, who joins us today from, I'm assuming, a sunny Los Angeles? Yes, yes. absolutely. It's uh, hard to find a non-sunny day in LA dawn, that's for sure. So Kelly and I worked together for a few years um, at Universal Pictures in the UK, and Kelly has now gone on to um, a really fabulous role where she is the Vice President of Global Brand Marketing over at Universal Pictures, where she looks after some small franchises, just little things like Jurassic Park, um, Fast and Furious, um, Despicable Me, and Downton Abbey, to name but a few. So Kelly, welcome. Thank you so much for kind of joining me today. It's interesting, isn't it, that we saw so much connectivity through our communities off the back of COVID that even you and I kind of catching back up again is, I think, a really great example of using this time in a really nice way to kind of reconnect. Just love to kind of hear from you, your perspective around this whole topic, so just on a kind of human level, just really interested to kind of understand a person in a really big role such as yourself, how are you kind of coping on a, on a personal basis? Don, thank you and, and hello everyone from LA. I fell victim to the whole let's get a pet in the COVID scenario and it has given my husband and I the, the highest level of joy. It's also stopped us from focusing on ourselves and each other and the negativity that's coming with COVID. It's really brought a positive experience into our little household. The other thing I'm sure everybody's doing this is using technology to stay in touch with family. I've got family all over the world so from the UK to Australia to Canada and making sure that I'm touching base. My grandmother is 96 years old she lives on her own but she's moved in with my mum and so they're constantly doing dress up and cooking and all sorts of things to stay in contact so yeah. you know using technology to stay connected is really really important during these times. And how are you finding it I guess in terms of the kind of management of remote teams and kind of work from home? I would say it's not without its challenges because with managing teams you've got personalities and when you're in the office and you've got that face-to-face -face time it's a lot easier to pick up on the cues um, whether that's body language or whether it's tone and when you're relying on particularly email quite heavily or technology like teams or zoom you can lose some of those nuances making sure that I have daily contact with all of my teams not just my direct reports but the full team so we have a meeting every week we have a meeting every month with the broader team so at the end of every day I connect with one of my team members who's my direct report it's just to talk about the ridiculous things that have happened during the day it's normally about a 10 minute chat but because yeah. he's on his own in a flat it's just back to that keeping up that connection on a daily basis so let's kind of talk now about problem solving i'd kind of love to hear from you kelly about some of the stuff that you guys universal pictures point of view have been up to in terms of how have you been able to kind of make sense of creativity through all of this but one of the things that really stood out as you were saying that is content, entertainment itself is really, really important to get people through these times. Mm. So from a marketeer's perspective, we say content is king. From a human perspective, we say, let's be entertained. This exploration and the um, escapism has become even more important. Every night is movie night now. Our business had to look at how do we continue to entertain? How do we continue to inspire and support and deliver against that escapism? We made some really bold decisions. The first Trolls movie was such a phenomenon. It was a success. It's uplifting. You can't help but sing and dance along. 
So what we what we were in a position is that we had finished um, our production of Trolls 2 and we were just about to go into theatres and with theatres closing around the world, we really needed to sit down and determine what was going to be our, our go-to-market strategy. We knew was the timing was perfect to keep people uplifted and entertained. So how did we bring that into the home? We had had challenges with theatrical and exhibitors. It was not a business model that they wanted to support but actually working with them and getting them to understand that we were in a completely different um, environment and it wasn't necessarily something that we were going to continue to do once the stay at home orders were lifted but we did take Trolls 2 to premium VOD which is premium video on demand so that meant that you could watch Trolls 2 at home and you could rent that movie for a 48 hour period and you could sing and dance and have a wonderful family night. The people that actually did participate will be incentivized to purchase as they normally would, um, but at a discounted rate. So we were rewarding them for um, being on board with our program. So very challenging. We turned it around within about eight days. When you think a big company like Universal can take a while to turn the ship, but the agility and the collaboration across the entire business was just phenomenal. So not just rewarding the fans, but the teams became really close, getting into the trenches and really delivering against something that had been traditionally a very difficult conversation and execution. And it was interesting, Kelly, when I kind of saw the announcement that that was happening, I, having worked at Universal Pictures, my jaw literally dropped. You've only gone and done it. Yeah. <laughs> Which I just think, again, as a marketer in this kind of crazy world that we're now in, you have to be able to do unprecedented things. When you think the first, what we deem is the first window, so, you know, a film is created and it normally goes into cinema or theatres, and yep. there is a team, the theatrical marketing team, that are the experts, and they have all the data science um, and big data and small data that, at their fingertips. But ironically, then this is where that a huge level of collaboration came is home entertainment team they have all the expertise on what do people do at home. And you really had to blend the two marketing teams together and create mm. a new marketing team because all the data science of behavioural and economics of what happens in home is very different to theatre. Driving forces and the messaging is very different. We needed to make it not only very clear on what the offering was, but really rely on each other for each other's expertise. I think that that has really internally broken down some silos, which is very exciting for the future. You also gave me a sneaky preview, Kelly, that you've been hanging out with some pretty cool people recently. Is that right? I have. I had a real fangirl moment, Dawn. The movie is over 26 weeks. It's then deemed library or catalogue. Mm -hmm. And these titles, as you know, are available across physical and digital. And actually what we've been looking at is reconnecting people with films that they love what we've created is an eight-week viewing program in the uk it is 8 45 p.m on a saturday for the next couple of months our first film that we did was pitch perfect it's a twitter watch party the actual technology is that everybody gets to queue their copy of the film so you can purchase pre-purchase the film so we'll have the talent or influencers and what they'll do is they will show behind the scenes footage of photographs they may have taken on set and then we'll do a countdown and we all watch the film together and during that time everybody is using Twitter to communicate so you can ask the talent questions. So let's fast forward to last Saturday. It was a heartthrob moment and we actually watched the 2018 version of Halloween and the genius behind that is a gentleman by the name of Jason Blum who really is you know the king of horror. He is a phenomenally talented filmmaker and in the film as you probably know we had um, Jamie Lee Curtis we had David Gordon Green Mike Myers and all of the talent got behind it so we had eight different cast members participating answering questions engaging with the fans we smashed all records our reach was over 900 million people globally 53 media outlets we'd actually trended in six countries we felt like we were breaking the internet so Kim Kardashian and watch out. <laughs> fans found that incredibly exciting. The number of people that dressed up 
at home and created their own little watch party. It just goes to show that people want to connect, they want to be entertained, yeah. and back to that content is key.